Hi friends, it's Christina Andino with the Jasinski Home Team. I'm here at our office, Berkshire Hathaway in downtown LaGrange. And I'm here with my friend Tim Trumpeter, and he is my go-to old and historic house architect expert in the LaGrange area. He's like my Bob Vila from this old house. Um, and he has done probably, I don't know, 80-90% of renovations in the LaGrange historic district. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you will know who he is. But we're, we're just kind of chit-chatting today about... Um, the pros and cons of working with older homes and historic homes in the historic districts, namely the Grange. Um, so uh, we started kind of talking a little bit before about the advantages of working within a historic district such as the Grange's and what has your experience been with that? Well, the values of homes uh, are really good in the historic district because people maintain them well. Uh, it has a bit of um, pride built into it. Right. Like I'm in the historic district, I'm mm -hmm. close to the schools, I'm on this block, I'm on that block. So it's one of those things, people take a lot of pride, they watch what's going on in town, mm -hmm. and it's it's actually, they see work being done on one home, and then three other houses on that same block mm -hmm. start doing similar things, whether it's landscaping or painting, mm -hmm. upgrading windows. <clears throat> so. Neighbors use each other to demystify how to get things done. They always ask, okay, who did you hire? How are they good? You know, what was the process like? Right. And that, that helps a lot. And I have, I recommend my clients do the same thing. Right. You know, talk to your neighbors and see how they approached it. How long did it take? Mm -hmm. Was it what you expected in the way of cost? Were there any unforeseen? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges you see in working with the older houses? Well, they, it depends on the level of care, because uh, most of the homes I'm working on are 80 to 120 years old. Right. Um, there's some newer ones, and I have had to fix relatively new homes. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, it's has it been well maintained? Are there things that need to be addressed to make it comfortable to live in the house? Mm -hmm. um, Every person has a different uh, idea on what they like or dislike about old houses. Right, right. So there's mechanical systems, there's windows, doors, you know, what condition are, is the roof in, you know. So it all, every project is a little different and I have to go through a whole uh, series of questions and ask people, right. it's like, what, what do you want to do in a house? And right. so I usually like to have uh, clients live there at least six months before we get started so they can tell me what they like and dislike. Uh, they kind of getting a feel for They have the to learn about the house. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the good thing is a lot of um, my clients actually grew up in this area. Yes. And they're moving back close to their parents mm -hmm. and to what they what they like and what they know. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very safe investment around here. Right, right. Yeah, you can't go around in the range for sure. Um, and this is kind of your process you go through with mm -hmm. people when they start a project, right? Right. I'll, I'll talk with them and say, all right, <clears throat> give me your scope of work that you'd like to do. I take copious notes. And then I have them hire me as a consultant, and I check the building code, the zoning, mm -hmm. see what possibilities they can do on their right. home, whether they want to just renovate internally or do an addition, mm -hmm. or just make upgrades. Not everybody, you know, needs to do an addition. Sometimes it's like uh, they call me and say, I want to replace my driveway. Sure. Do you have somebody you could recommend? Mm -hmm. So I get called all the time on, and I recommend a lot of my general contractors and their subcontractors um, if I've had good experience with them. Right, right. And what is, well, one of the benefits of, um, for working within that historic district in the Grange um, I understand that there are some tax um, advantages that come with doing a project. Well, the only within the historic district, the only tax advantage uh, would be if you wanted to do some changes to the front facade of your home, mm -hmm. you can apply to the state of Illinois. They have an architect um, at the state that has some say so on the aesthetics of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't necessarily try and 
change a Cape Cod to a Victorian, right. they'll, they'll make you stay within the boundaries or the guidelines for uh, that style of home. Right. And then they will freeze the, your real estate taxes for a period of eight years. Okay. Um, and then after four years, of being stagnant, then they wean you back for the next four years. Okay. Back to what um, the taxes would have been. Right. So if there is a there is a savings, but it is a little bit of a okay. um, paperwork process and it takes several months to get it approved. Mm -hmm. But for the right person that has you know plans on staying, this actually makes sense. Right. Right. And it is transferable to the next homeowner, so you don't have to necessarily stay in the house for eight years. That tax freeze goes with the property. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Um, and it seems like that's a lot less complicated than trying to get on the historic register, which is a much more complicated years long process. And I don't think a whole lot of people want to go through that. I, so, I would assume so, and I think there probably are some criteria on whether the house is considered still in its original state. Uh, the National Register and things of that sort are very particular on, okay, well, there's an addition on the back of the house, so we can't classify this. Right. You know, and none of these homes, very few homes in town that I've worked on haven't had changes made. Yes. And so I think the National Register probably is both an internal and an external analysis of the home, whether it right. qualifies. Yeah. So. So if people um, would like to do renovations with you or would like to consult with you, what would the process be? Where would they start? They're really, it's just a phone call to start. And I have a series of questions that I ask them over the phone, set up the scope of work, the time frame that they'd like to do it in. Um, and I email them some information um, about my company. And then I, <clears throat> if they, if they want to hire me, then then it's just on an hourly basis yeah. um, to do an initial analysis to set up um, the feasibility and put a cost estimate together and a schematic design. Mm -hmm. So that works fairly well and it sets up um, people for potential investments or they can, now they know how much it's going to cost to execute what they'd like to do. So they may wait several years to save the money or say, you know what, this was a good exercise to go through, but I just really wanted to know it so I can sell my house and market it to the next person that says, right. oh, can I do a family room? Yes, you can. And here's the document that says you can. Right. right. If anybody needs work done by somebody who is amazing at this kind of thing, you can contact Tim Trumpeter at, what is your phone number? It's 708-655-2907. Or you can contact me and I will put you in touch with Tim. And that is it for today, friends.